Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving southern and mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Hi everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silek, and we've got an exciting show lined up for you this week. We'll introduce you to a group of ladies who spent the day pheasant hunting and introducing some newcomers to the sport. They had a great day afield. You won't want to miss that story and we'll bring you an ice fishing adventure this week too. Yes, Jenny, our first story on this week is quite an adventure. It is ice fishing on Saginaw Bay. That is always a ton of fun and a little scary getting out there from time to time, but we did get some nice fish on the ice. And if you have some walleye laying around, we have a good walleye recipe for you on this week's show as well. Lots of good stories. Make sure you stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By RBM Jigs, a Michigan-based company serving ice fishing anglers around the state and throughout the country. Specializing in ice fishing gear, RBM Jigs manufactures tungsten jigs, soft plastics, and much more. Online at lakeeffectlures.com. By Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, polarcraft.com. by Angler Quest Pontoons. Angler Quest is a Michigan-based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information, anglerquestpontoons.com. Each year we try to at least hit Saginaw Bay during the winter months a time or two. This year our friends at Frank's had a huge group of anglers heading out on the ice and we were happy to tag along. Some folks had won a chance to be on this trip and with conditions finally looking good, we were all getting ready to hit the ice. I think we're having a party out on Saginaw Bay today. We've got a couple of contest winners from Frank's Shanty Days who are here with their new otters. And uh, we've got some otter pro staff, some Frank's pro staff. Jimmy and I are here, my husband Matt tagged along, um, Andy's wife Kate tagged along, and uh, we're all heading out for the evening bite, so it might take us till evening to wrangle up the <laughs> 17 people or so we've got going, but um, looks like they've been doing pretty good out here for walleye, so we're going to give it a whirl. We were heading out about seven to eight miles, and when fishing Saginaw Bay, just getting to your spot, well, that is half the adventure. The plan was to have all of us about 50 to 75 yards away from each other in hopes of covering some water, but also close enough to be able to see how each other was doing. I was able to jump from shack to shack as we all got set up. So I had to put a shanty on layway, an otter sh uh, shanty on layway, and um, I think it was the first Friday of shanty days. Um, they did a Facebook Live video, and I was one of the two that were, were drawn for the, nice. the winning. So. Yeah, I was excited. It was it was hard to tell if we were going to be able to be out here. Uh, three weeks ago, we thought not because all the ice blew out. And, yeah. And then uh, the last three or four days, it didn't seem like we'd have a chance either. So huh. we're just fortunate to come out. And yeah. Cool. Try, well, glad you could be here. Try the North Bay. Well, what are you gonna? What's your setup here today? 
I guess I'm gonna start out with this Wonder Bread jig. The minnow. The minnow. We had a few first timers out here, but we also had some guys that fish this bay all the time and really know this fishery very well. This is Andy's spot. I just kind of rode out with these guys, but uh, I noticed we're on a nice contour, so it's okay. it's a little bit deeper behind us and a little bit shallower over by Jenny. So I'm fishing right kind of in the middle of the contour where they usually cruise for their food. And what kind of a setup do you use down there? On my rods? Yeah. Like oh, I'm, I'm running a, a VMC Moon Eyes jig. This is what's been Working best on my charters for us. Glows, beats up the dirt, and I can keep my minnow alive quite a while down there, even oh. even though he's stuck. <laughs> How was the fishing this this year? Um, it's been a little tough. Yes, I mean, sir. yeah, they're finicky. We had we didn't get our ice until late, hmm. so you know everybody came out here with the expectation that it was first ice and they were just gonna hog fish in, and it hasn't really happened like that. Some days it does, and but more times than not, you really gotta finesse them. Hmm. Well, after a few hours, the first fish of the day finally came in in Jenny and Matt's shack. Now we just needed to get it through the ice. We got go. a fish, fish on. on. Saginaw Bay. Unbelievable. Oh, 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 oh. Nice head shake. Oh, it's a good walleye. I see it. I see it. All right, hold on. Let's slow him down. Oh, oh, easy. Oh, oh, oh. Easy. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh, this is exciting. Hold on, hold on. Here we go. Come on, baby. Come this on in here. This is your new setup that you This tried? is my new setup. Wait till Andy sees it. Hold on. Let me get his head up. I gotta get his head up in the hole. <laughs> there he is. Go, go, go. Get him, get him, get him, get him. Nice. <laughs> him. Beautiful fish. Take him out, take him out. There you go. Oh, man. Nice. Yeah, hey, Andy, it. those things work. <laughs> nice <Woo -hoo>! job. <laughs> yes. Andy. Nice, nice. I nice chunk of a walleye here from Saginaw Bay. Come on. First one in two years. Hey, Andy, that rig works. <laughs> Just a rig I seen a guy up in uh, Minnesota was using on Lakes of the North for late season walleye. Hmm. He's got more of a, I'm just using two buckshot lures that rattles in them. You pound the bottom and then it rattles and it brings them in. If they don't like that, then you just got a minnow off this uh, drop shot hook up here okay. just swimming around. If they don't like that, they come up here and suck this one in. Well, it seems that's to exactly work. what happened. Nice job, young nice. man. Nice. Well, the first fish was a dandy, and the fact that we had the camera in the shack was a miracle. As the day progressed, more folks ventured out. The spot we originally wanted to go had unsafe spots. Where we were here was very solid. It's always good to talk to the locals to find out what is safe and what isn't out here. Brandon and Joe Raymer know this style of fishing very well, and we're about to put on a clinic. I got you now. Get him. Yeah. Nice walleye. Funky. Come on, get on. Get on that hey. Way to go, dude. Oh, that's a nice fish. Beautiful fish. Nice saying, I'll be walleye. And what you, were you using on that? Uh, PK spoon. Okay. The new rattle spoon. Look at, he's mad. He does not want to be out here. Nice. The guys had said that most of the fish weren't going to bite until about five ish, and they were right. As we got closer to dark, the fishing picked up. Come on, baby. Got him? Oh yeah. Nice. I think you like the whole winner. Yeah, I think. Look at that. It. Oh yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those custom JD's locos that we got at Frank's. But uh yeah, he's well, he's way down there. Need heels? No, got him. Beautiful. Nice job, young man. Alright, got another one here. Dandy. Brandon picked a nice spot for us to pick these fish <laughs> up, eh? <laughs> Nice, beautiful walleye, man. They're still down there, Jimmy. Let's get some more. Sandwiches are stacking up. All right, Jimmy. Got another one. Got another one on the the loco. He's pulling. He's pulling. He's 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 not happy right now. Every once in a while, they let me out of the store. Then <laughs> I get to have a little fun. But he's not happy right now, man. He needs some. He needs some help. There he is. There he is. Not a bad one. Oh, you see that? Oh, see that? The hook come out? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I got him. Nice fat one, eh? Look at that. Yeah, turn him beside you. Oh, 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 baby. We got him. Hold on. <laughs> there he is. Look at that. That's a don't, nice fish. Don't tell Andy I stole his loco. Boy, what a pretty fish. 
Well, that's what? Two and a couple minutes. Ten minutes, maybe, yeah. All right. There's more down there, too. Brandon's got one on going on his right now. He's chasing me. Most all the shacks were marking fish, but for whatever the reason, our spot had some aggressive fish. Another one. Oh, yeah. On the loco. Thank you, Andy. Oh, that's a good one, too. I got them. Look at that, baby. These are really nice fish. They are. That's a beautiful fish. I'll tell you. Somebody brought you along. <laughs> I wasn't planning on fishing. <laughs> yep, come up back and got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kurt, you came right back. Yeah. Oh. Nice. Oh, yeah. Very good. There we are. Yeah, All right. Sweet. What lure you think that is, Jimmy? Uh, local? Oh, yeah. The clown logo. <laughs> nice. He come off about what? About halfway up? Just kept it there. Came back and ate it again. They're getting a little aggressive. Yeah. Finally. Yeah, we hear a lot about them fish not biting on Saginaw Bay. Maybe something triggered them. Looks hmm. like they're biting now. Get back to it. They're stacking up. Jeez, the peaks. He's windmilling up. Look at that. <laughs> nice. Beauty. Swallowed the Simcoe bug. Simcoe bug, not just for perch. Yeah. Hey, Fish. look at. Got another one, Jimmy. Brandon put us on a good spot. How about that, eh? All right. A good eater there. Yeah, it is. Back on the. Look at that. Same. Loco. I won't be in there buying local tomorrow. I'm not even <laughs> Look at that. Now explain to me what's the deal with this lure here. <coughs> you keep calling it the loco? What is it? Loco. L O C O. Yep. It was a lure that was made a long time ago by uh, Lure Jensen. So <sighs> they don't make the size anymore. They still, I think they make the bigger sizes, but that's a custom painted one that he's been using in Saginaw Bay for years and years and years. So we custom paint them at the store, JD's Custom Tackle, and we sell them. And it's just got this, they call it loco because it's just loco. It just goes everywhere in the water with this hmm. flutter. It goes from side to side. You know, I've been tangled up with Brandon so many times already. Yeah, it really but, moves uh, around. Yeah. And uh, they've been just eating it right out of the mud today. So come in all kinds of different, you know, uh, colors and lots of glow colors. But, hmm. yeah, this is the deal tonight with the Simcoe bug. With the Simcoe bug. <laughs> Several of our crew caught no fish tonight. Some had one or two, but Joe and Brandon, well, they had about 10. So it depends on who you talk to, I guess. Sometimes the fishing is rough on the bay, and every once in a while, they just keep coming through the ice here in Michigan's Out of Doors. For our next segment on this week's show, I was in mid-Michigan to cover a pheasant hunting event that's all about getting more women into the outdoors. This is a women's only pheasant hunt event that's been sponsored by Montgomery County chapter of Pheasants Forever. This is our third annual women's only event. Uh, and this year we're able to bring 25 female hunters into a two day hunting situation. So there has been so much increased interest from women across Michigan for opportunities to experience both the outdoors shooting and hunting that our, um, our, our intake list has grown phenomenally. So. Uh, women reach out to me all the time asking for an opportunity to experience this kind of activity and so Mimos has partnered with us to provide a beautiful venue, some really experienced guides and dogs to, to provide a safe and enjoyable opportunity for, for women that may have not done it before. For this event I would be tagging along with four women who all had some hunting experience but had never been pheasant hunting before. I think we were all anxious to hit the fields and watch the dogs work. We'll have two ladies on each side. We'll keep our gun tips up 
at all times. Safety's on. He's a point dog, so he goes on point. I say get ready. Flushes. Say the two ladies on the left side. Your zone is from the middle of the sorghum all the way over here. If it goes straight left, the outside lady shoots. Okay, not the inside lady. Right. You, hopefully they go out here and then everybody shoots. Right side, same thing. The strip, right side over. And stuff. Then tips up, we'll just have some fun. So it's not ready. <laughs> I think in my experience, maybe the number of women are not growing in the population, but the number of women who realize that the outdoors is a great place to be um, is growing. And so they're looking for more opportunities to experience new outdoor activities. And they're happy to experience things that have previously been uh, maybe misclassified as dangerous or or um, unenjoyable or mean or cruel and, and they've come to find out that these are actually enjoyable activities um, that many women around them have very similar interests and then when they get the opportunity to come out and experience these things um, in a safe low stress women only environment it makes them much more willing to try something different. So I think in this is our third year doing this program um, that our list has grown from four women to a hundred women. And so this opportunity this year sold out in less than two hours. So there are just tons of people that are interested in doing this, especially women. Nice shooting there. Thank you. First one ever? First ever. Throughout the day, I heard several women mention they felt much more comfortable asking questions at an all-women's event than they would otherwise, which is one of the main reasons this event was put together. I find that they really want to try new things. For instance, we have a older hunter here today who has never experienced pheasant hunting because she's never really had the opportunity and it's intimidating for her to approach men who are traditional pheasant hunters and say, I'd like to go pheasant hunting without knowing how to pheasant hunt, what pheasant hunting is, what's the right gun, what's the right shot, what choke do you use? And we provide this event where we have women only um, so they can feel much more comfortable to ask questions, to say, okay, we have a, a higher level skeet uh, trap shoot right now, who wants to try that? And in a situation where they're mixed with men, they typically wouldn't, but here they're mixed with other women with similar uh, worries. Uh, so they're more likely to step out and say, I'll try it, I'll be the first one. So I think this provides an avenue for, for women to have a low stress, low pressure activity um, and makes them more likely to participate. Well, I was really nervous. I almost backed out of coming. Uh, it's just very intimidating. Uh, I like that it's all women though because we feel like we're all on the same level. Um, so as soon as we started shooting skeet and stuff we just start to feel more comfortable and get out hunting and stuff and you don't feel judged I guess. So it's just you can just have fun and I would definitely come again. When I started hunting it was with all men and I don't really, I've never really been around other women hunters and you know they know, they seem to know more and do it more so it's just intimidating because you don't know as much and you feel kind of like, I don't know, just to stay back and not ask questions. I felt more comfortable asking these guys questions than I've ever had in any hunt I've went on. This event focused mostly on upland hunting, but there's a lot more to Pheasants Forever than the number of birds that hit the ground, including a new initiative aimed at getting more people into the outdoor lifestyle. Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever have a new Call of the, call of the Uplands uh, initiative going on and it has very little to do with just pheasant hunting or quail hunting. It's about habitat. It's about getting women involved. It's about getting children involved and having youth programs increasing a life legacy of a, li a life lived outdoors instead of a life that's lived indoors and electronics with little social interaction. So I think that it's worthwhile to get involved. Uh, we, we all have to take the initiative and get involved if we want this to this to persist and not to die out. Organizations like Pheasants Forever and many others around the state do a great job at getting more people into the outdoors, which may be more important now than ever before. Special thanks to Sherry and everyone else involved for letting me tag along on a fun day of pheasant hunting here in mid-Michigan.
All right, well, we are here once again, Antlers Fireside Grill, Jim Wood, Canadian Lakes, kind of right smack dab in the middle of the state. And we are here today with some more walleye, Jim, and I see some paper. What in the world we got going on here? Yeah, so this is called uh, walleye empiat or fish empiat, which just translates to fish baked in paper. Okay. So it's essentially steamed, keeps all the moisture inside. You create uh, everything you put on it creates a sauce, and it's a one plate meal because hmm. all the vegetables and everything are right in it. And what kind of paper are we using here? This is just parchment paper, baking paper. Huh. You can get it at the supermarket. Okay. Pretty easy to find. All right. Well, start us off. How do we do this? So first, we have to kind of cut. What kind of shape are you trying to find here? Almost a heart shape. Okay. Because I haven't seen you in a long time. <laughs> And now we are using walleye, like we mentioned, but could you use lake trout or salmon or whitefish or anything? You could use any fish you want, literally, yeah. As thick or as thin. So mine didn't really come out like a heart, but it's close enough. It's more of an oval. <laughs> so we'll start with our vegetables, and it's all done on one side. So if you were doing... This, this is like a one serving kind of a thing, or this would be for two people, or? I mean, depending on how big your part, I mean, you could do it for whatever you want. Um, this would technically be for one person. So you need multiple of these if you mm -hmm. had, okay. Yep. So you want to layer the flavor, so you're going to salt each layer of vegetables that you put on here. Hmm. So after that, we'll put a little bit of zucchini or squash. I guess you could put about whatever you wanted in here. Mm -hmm. That is the beauty of it. Whatever kind of vegetables are in season, whatever kind of vegetables you like. Hmm. And then sweet corn. And is that already cooked? Nope, corn this is raw. Raw, okay. Yep. Okay, and then I always like to put some fresh herbs in it just to kind of give it some flavor. Here we're going to do uh, some basil because basil goes really good. Um, goes good with all the vegetables, but especially the corn and the tomatoes. Hmm. And we're going to cook this on the grill or a smoker, either one. So you could cook it on a pellet, uh, pellet grill, okay. um, and you'd have to cook it on a, a pan, but it's something you can do outside. Hmm. So during the summer, it's really nice. Um, you could also just do it in the oven, which is how we're going to do it here. Okay. Uh, but if I was at my house where I have a, a pellet grill, I would do it right on that. So not a lot of seasoning on the, just, just a little bit of salt. Just a little bit of salt. Yeah, I mean, anything really more than that kind of can overpower the fish. Okay. So then we're going to take just a little bit of OJ here. A little bit of white wine. And then we're going to put a little bit of butter. And that butter is going to do two things. Uh, one, it's going to protect the fish during cooking. And two, it's going to meld with all the citrus acid that we just put in there and help create a sauce for it. Next, fold the parchment paper over and make a series of small folds and creases along the outer edge. Then it's ready for the oven. Wow. And the veggies are all done and everything? Yep. And you can either take it right out or you can eat it right in the bag like you would kind of at a campfire. And do you do any seasoning at this point, or you're good to go? I don't. I, I salt it right beforehand, but you can hit it with the sauce. But the way we made it today, the sauce is all on the bottom now. Perfect. It's kept the fish really moist during the cooking process. So. Awesome. And what do we call this dish? Fish and papillot. Or fish and paper. Fish and paper. Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stay tuned in upcoming weeks. We've got a lot of great things in store for you. As we transition from winter into spring, we'll be doing some open water fishing and we'll be looking forward to turkey seasons that are just around the corner. There's lots of great things headed your way. Well, there is a lot of stuff happening here in the state of Michigan right now, so get out and enjoy it. And I believe on next week's show, we're going to try to feature you, the viewer. So if you have some good viewer video that you'd like to submit to us here at the television show, you can go to our Facebook page and find out how you can uh, get that video to us. And we're going to be doing that next week and maybe even a little bit into the week after that. We've gotten so many good videos from you, the viewer. So look forward to seeing that and make sure that you get out and enjoy everything that's happening in our state. And if we don't see it in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by. Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit greenstonefcs.com. 
by Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com. By Polar Craft Boats, offering riveted and welded boats for the outdoor enthusiast. Whether you're targeting fish or waterfowl, Polar Craft Boats have several models to choose from that keep you high and dry. For more information, polarcraft.com. By Angler Quest Pontoons. Angler Quest is a Michigan based company building boats designed for comfort and fishing functionality. For more information, anglerquestpontoons.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year round to improve health and antler growth. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. White tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from, and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land. I am a Michigan man. From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie, and back again. I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above 